All right, guys, we're running a little late. I do these things somewhat on the fly. Um, exciting thing is we're going to be really formalizing this. I know we, we say it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But um, rather than just using Zoom, we'll have kind of a cool collaboration tool launching uh, this month. So we'll be able to, to pop in and you get access to all the supporting documents and um, we'll have some interviews in there on, on the topics with the monthly theme. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, let's just pop into it. I think we've got enough people here. It's nice to see that, that people are, are back even without the, the marketing and the advertising. Um, I know you had to actively reschedule with that Zoom mishap last week in terms of um, getting this back in your calendar. So thank you for proactively doing that. Um, you, most people who are on the call um, know me already. I see a few strange names here, so I'll just pop in. If you're not familiar with BizNexus, please check that out. We're doing a lot of work to update that this quarter um, and last quarter. That's our platform for matching business buyers and business sellers with intermediaries or intermediary-backed listings. Um, and then we also run concierge services through that uh, platform. We do that through our agency, BN Digital. And that is all things deal origination. That's what we talk about here week over week, the process of getting in front of business owners in a position to sell, the uh, referral prospects who can deliver you those business owners on an ongoing basis, whether you're a buyer, an individual buyer, uh, family office, private equity, or whether you're an intermediary looking for, for multiple listings over time, that's what we're going through, leveraging all things digital to make that happen. Our process is, um, Something we'll get a little more into it's social selling, uh, but if you've been here for a while, you don't want to hear me talk anymore about that because um, at this point, it is not a new concept. So the the updates this week um, are concierge services, right? That's that's really our, our agency, so our paid agency. But if you're in BizNexus, you'll see the language there is, is describing um, anything and everything being digital as concierge services, right? Um, we have an integrated setup for our deal outreach. And that's that's actually turning into a really big deal. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you more about that next week, but there have been a lot of changes, especially within the LinkedIn world, where I think you're gonna see a lot of people um, scratching their head looking for, for a new process for their outreach. Um, we have integrated campaigns at the top of the funnel. We've been talking about that since, since the get-go. And we do that for a reason is because one arrow in the quiver might be more effective than the, the next from month to month to quarter to quarter. That is the world you're playing in when you're um, in digital marketing, if you're, if you're using outreach. And that is something that, um, let's just say the landscape is changing pretty significantly uh, under our feet right now. But moving forward, I think you'll see um, a lot of the noise on LinkedIn that we've seen through COVID where LinkedIn has been becoming somewhat of a Twitter with bots and sales bots and people just you know, inviting and introducing and making a hard sale. That's been a problem uh, for a long time. It's been a growing problem through COVID. And I think they're making changes that um, look look pretty good. So in terms of adding value to the platform and limiting bots and limiting sales outreach, um, you're going to see that coming into play with some pretty drastic changes over the next quarter. Um, and we'll probably need to, to dedicate an entire lunch and learn just to that. But um, right now we're sticking with the referral theme for the month. So that's what we're going to run through today. Um, that's the big update with, with our outreach. We just have that whole process dialed with the integrated outreach. And um, we are actually managing for clients who want it. We're, we're managing everything right through to, to the handoff. So in terms of meeting scheduling, uh, we have clients who are really going right through to LOI. Um, we've significantly upgraded um, our, our entire process for, for outreach and CRM management, um, task assignment, everything. So if you're busy with transactions, you need somebody to manage top to mid funnel, um, we're there. And then from mid to bottom of the funnel, we have some very sophisticated marketing and sales automation, which we've been doing with clients um, for some time now, but we really, like everything, we, we fine tune it in-house and then we start to, to roll it out. Um, once we've had success, we, we drink our, old, our own Kool-Aid, so to speak, with, with all of our products and services before we, we roll them out. Um, BizNex is just stay tuned, guys. We, you know, the big release, we have suggested buyers if you're an intermediary. Um, every time you upload a deal that is worthy of a strategic or, or private equity, so it has to be at a certain financial threshold or an in industry that they're actually looking at, 
you're going to see a suggested buyer and you can click right through to their website and, and reach out. Um, you know, we're not putting you right in front of the decision maker, but we're, we're certainly sending you in the right direction in terms of identifying the type of buyout firm that will um, be interested in your deal as you upload that to, to BizNexus. So we're excited about that first version and, and where that'll go. Um, that's really great for the update, I think. Let's just stick with that. So let's hop into it. Our social selling process, I'm not gonna go deep on this, but we have um, a, a long game philosophy in terms of deal origination, right? So you need to build your reputation. You need to build awareness. You need to stay in front of your prospects and your referral prospects online over time, but make sure that you're taking advantage of all the data, um, you know, all the trackable data that you can to make sure that when a prospect is indicating that they're interested in your offering, you're aware of that. You get a, a sales-based task, you know, based on, on lead scoring, um, you, know, you have insight into your prospect activity. So you know when to reach out so that you can capture, so you can get that proverbial cup of coffee, right? The referral prospects, um, that's really, we're going through top to bottom of the funnel this month with approaching and managing referral prospects. Today, we're on running referral campaigns, right? So I'm just gonna really go through outreach, what that looks like, nurturing, what that looks like, um, a couple prospect research tips and tactics. Then next week, we'll go through specific referral incentive plans, how those work, um, what has worked, and how to, to keep getting those in front of your referral prospects so they're, they're clearly aware um, of what's in it for them if, if they're sending you a referral. And then we'll wrap out the month with um, examples, case studies. That's going to be an ongoing theme with these uh, monthly lunch and learns. We're going to end the month with, with clear takeaways and send you off with some good stuff. So to revisit why we're doing this theme this month, um, over time, especially in the world of M&A, of business acquisition and sale, if you are an intermediary or if you're a buyout firm looking for multiple deals, if you're focused on any specific niche, referrals wind up being more valuable than any proprietary deal origination strategy that you have in place. Um, you know, one good referral source can fill your pipeline, right? So it's the fastest way to fill your pipeline if you have a good, reliable referral source who trusts you and vice versa, right? And we're going to keep talking about that throughout the month, building trust, right? That is the focus of these campaigns, offering value, building trust. You're not trying to make a sale, you're building a relationship. Um, if you do that, you do that successfully, you'll find the leads that come through your referral sources are closing much faster when they come to the referral. And that's just common sense, right? Um, if, if, they, if they trust your referral source and you get the, um, the intro through that referral source. And if it's a legitimate introduction, it's not just a, a brief LinkedIn message, but if you know, they're saying something about you and you know, I know so-and-so and he does a good job, she does a good job, she helps with this, um, that's invaluable. And, and that's deal flow over time if you can nurture that referral prospect in, in the appropriate way. Um, there's, there's no winning the trust other than your first meeting and you know, don't drop the ball. That's you know, a good referral relationship is really just not dropping the ball. Um, so you see it, especially with some of the old timers in the industry, um, Main Street, Middle Market, they're just relying on their referral prospects. That's it. They don't even do any deal origination, right? They might do some drop notes. They might do some, some snail mail, but really they're just leaning on a few referral relationships and, and living quite nicely doing that. So if you can set it up, and if you can get a system in place for continuing to develop referral prospects, not a lot of people are doing that successfully because you know, the, the online um, game is still relatively new. And when it comes to, to M&A, um, this is something that has, it's an industry that has been behind. And with COVID, everyone is much more um, open to the Zoom calls, to the, the top of the funnel relationship uh, development. You know, people are much more open to that happening online than they ever were um, pre-pandemic. So that's something to note with your outreach. Um, last week, we our main takeaways, start with who you know, focus on you know, non-competing referral sources who do target the end, the same end target prospect as you, right? So who can you collaborate with? Who's already spending marketing dollars, sales dollars on reaching your end prospect? How do you make sure that, that you're collaborating with that person, right? So that you're, you're doubling your outreach. Um, 
And then we went through all the types of referral prospects in this industry in M&A that are popular that typically work. So today, again, popping into the, the main areas, um, we've got you know, with outreach, um, the goal here is to establish your value proposition. That's it, right? So when people have these three series emails to referral prospects, that, that is a mistake, right? You don't wanna have the intro, the follow-up, and then the closeout email. Um, we, we do see that a lot with intermediaries who are managing their own campaigns or if they've had you know, an agency or something that, that is not really um, familiar with the way M&A works and, and what, a, what a long game this is when it comes to, to landing a transaction uh, with somebody who's been building a business over time. So be careful about that. Just state your value prop, make it natural, make sure that they see it. So um, whether you're sending this as an email or an in-mail or lobbying in a phone call, um, you know, this is who I am, this is what I do, right? That's the point of your outreach. And you can resend that three times, two times, five times, doesn't matter if you're, if you're doing it the right way where you're only resending to people who have not opened your value proposition email, you can make sure that value proposition actually gets in front of the eyeballs, right? You can make sure that your referral prospect sees it if you're doing this the, the right way, whether you're doing that through, through email, in-mail, call. Um, that's it. That's all you want to do when you're approaching a new referral prospect. You just want to make sure that they're seeing and understanding your value prop. Then you roll that over into the nurture campaign. So what does this look like? I mean, if you're sending an email, it might be something like this. I just um, put this together right, right before the call, but basically um, you know, going back to this format, if you're sending an email, your prospect should understand who are you and why are, why are we talking right now? And so you start with that, you know, how did, how did I find you? How, why, are, why are we here together right now in this moment in this email? Um, this is who I am, social proof, some name dropping, just something that clearly says, okay, you're, you're, you're doing what you're, you're saying you're doing, and then the call to action. So what does that look like? It might just be um, a subject and you know, that can be partnership intro, you know, first names, you're putting variables in there with company, first name, you're gonna get a lot more opens. But again, if you're resending to unopens, that matters less. So you don't have to be salesy in that subject. In the body, if you, you know, lead to something like if you're dealing with John Doe, you know, hi, John. Um, my team spotted your article on HVAC World and gave me the heads up to reach out. Try to make it as natural as possible in your voice, but what you want there is a, a clear niche line about you know, how you came together, right? So if there is an article that you've read, if there's something very specific to the niche, um, lead with that. And then the next component of that email should be something very clean, clear about who you are and what you do. Right. I work with HVAC business owners throughout greater Boston area, um, helping with business valuation, exit planning and sale. That's it. Right. You want to make sure that they're reading, they're reading that it lands or it doesn't. And if you know that they've read it, then they'll either respond now or you can put them into a nurturing campaign. And when it's relevant, you'll be top of mind. Then you close out with something, a call to action. And that's the time to get them on a call now if they're interested in having that conversation. If not, then you know, don't push it. This is a referral connection, right? You're not trying to have that valuable discussion with somebody who, who's going to turn into an engagement. You're trying to nurture a relationship who over time will develop enough trust um, to give you that prospect. So don't, don't be too pushy. The CTA should just offer an intro call, um, reference your referral program. I'd be happy to chat about a referral program and how that, how that works. Um, you know, for HVAC focused specialists like you, it's a little salesy, but, um, you know, if you can make it niche and make sure that it's relevant, they're going to be interested, right? If, if you're a potential source of leads and compensation, at some point, they're going to want to hop on the line. Um, now, once you've done that and you've established your, your value prop with your referral prospect, you want to bring them over into the nurturing campaign, right? And so what does that look like? Well, um, it, it can look like a lot of things depending on what time, type of CRM or marketing or sales automation you have. This is where tracking becomes invaluable, right? So if you're with, if, if you're doing some marketing automation, rule number one is you wanna make sure that you're nurturing 
is right in line with your outreach. We always talk about having hyper-specific outreach. So, you know, a financial advisor will have a very specific campaign geared towards financial advisors. If you're linking out to any landing page or article that's relevant to financial advisors, it's not general, it's, it's very specific. Same thing with nurturing. So if you have any lead magnets in place, if you're using landing pages, if you're sending them to your website, you shouldn't just send them to a general page on your website. It should be something that actually talks about, you know, if you're targeting financial advisors, it should be about financial advisors. It should be specific to them. That converts over time, right? That lands, especially when you're talking about staying top of mind with a referral prospect, you want to give them something that's actually gonna land and stay top of mind and that's gonna be industry specific. So what works here for nurturing? If you're doing your outreach, you know that they've seen that first message, you can roll them in a quarterly blast and sticking with the financial advisor analogy, maybe that's um, just an update on um, the market and, and multiples and how business owner clients can get the best sale price now in, in history because this is where the, the private business acquisition and sale market is. Something that's relevant to financial advisors, right? We can help you, we can help your clients find liquidity and we can help manage their, their exit planning in conjunction with, with your estate planning and here's how we do it. Some, something that's relevant to that financial advisor and delivers the, the incentive as to why they would wanna work with you. Um, a case study about how you've worked with other financial advisors, how other financial advisors have, have had success, you know, what your process is for working with financial advisors. If you can set this up or an admin can set it up, that goes out once a quarter. It's really um, the actual content that you're putting in for the intro it might be 20% unique, 80% just template. But if you have that in place, that's all automated. Um, if you're using a general newsletter only because you don't have the bandwidth, then just having a CTA button in your newsletter that references your referral program for bringing in the business owners, um, that's something that you absolutely should have, right? So if you're not gonna do any, any sort of newsletter or quarterly blast that's specific to your referral prospect, make sure you have that CTA in your newsletter that mentions your referral program so that if they're dealing with a business owner who might be a fit in the moment, they're going to reach out to you. Um, and then D actually probably should be A, setting up lead scoring and sales tasks. If you're in a CRM, making sure that you know, if your referral prospect has been tagged as such and they're visiting your referral program page, for example, on your website multiple times, you, know, you want to pop in pop in a sales task just to reach out. Um, retargeting also works really well with anything like this. So over time, if you want to stay in front of financial advisors, if you want to show an ad to just those financial advisors who you're bringing into your, into your CRM, um, assuming you're tagging everything appropriately, that's, that's very easy to do and it's cheap, right? So for a list of a thousand, you might spend um, you know, 500 bucks a month right? Something, something like that to target these high value referral sources over time and just show your ads. And you can put that list together as a custom list, right? So if you have a thousand really high value referral prospects, you can put that list together and show them ads. If you have half that much, you can still do it. Um, so I don't think I need to go through the actual workflow. Um, if you have any questions, you just reach out to me separately and I can walk you through what a workflow will, will look like for you in terms of how we do it internally with our CRM, just setting up that trackable path with you know, a new contact getting tagged as a financial advisor and um, then setting up the, the appropriate series of sales tasks and making sure you have the lead scoring in place. We can help you get set up with this, whether you're with us or not, happy to, to share our process and, and get you off to the races there. Um, so that being said, let me show you first place to start. If you're in LinkedIn, you always want to search your first degree connections. Okay. So if you're looking at a certain type of, um, of, of prospect, all right, let's say we're looking for, um, uh, let's go with, let's do a lead search for financial advisors. Right. So if you're looking at financial advisors, and you're looking in a specific area, all right. So financial advisors, um, relationship, you want to keep first degree connections, you're looking at your own connections, 
And let's just say, I don't know, you're looking in your area. Let's see, my area is Boston. Got eight there. Let me start with that. Take this list. You can save your search, right? So if you have, if you're whittling this down to something specific, if you're putting in keywords like SaaS or HVAC, because you want to look for financial advisors who are actually working with HVAC clients or SaaS clients, nail down that search, play with the industry, play with you know, seniority level, um, you know, play with the, the keywords, certainly if you're, if you're pursuing a niche, um, and then save the search. LinkedIn is getting better with giving you updates that matter. So every time you pop into LinkedIn, whether you're on the app or whether you're on your desktop, you're gonna see the updates that are relevant um, to these prospects, right? So if they're in your network and they're posting, or if they're in your network and they have some sort of job change, or if they're in your network and they've liked an article, you can go and check on activity specifically for that, that group, for those referral prospects, or just open the, the app, the Sales Navigator app, um, specifically in your phone if you have that, is very good for this. You just open the app and you can go through and you can start engaging. Um, not only that, I've showed this on, on past Lunch and Learns, but you can pop in and you can check out your prospects. So here, if I wanted to look at Austin's um, network, I could pop in and maybe filter out business owners, right? Who's been running a company for 10 plus years. And if you're going to sit down you know, for lunch with Austin or coffee with Austin, maybe you can shortlist some people and just have that on your mind in terms of you know, who Austin might be in a position to introduce you to, right? That can get a little creepy if you don't do it well. But if you, if you want to do prospect research and you want to have a specific ask um, as to who they can introduce you to, maybe, maybe you have a suggestion. You could say, oh, John Doe, business owner, who um, you know, I saw you're connected with John Doe, who runs a SaaS company. I've been working with a ton of SaaS companies. Does it make sense for us to connect? You know, would, you, would, you, would you give me the intro? That kind of thing. Um, but that's where this all becomes you know, the sales task versus the marketing. And it's very important that you set up systems like this. So the saved search for your referral prospects so that every now and then when you can hop into LinkedIn, we can hop into sales now, you can engage with them. You'll see that and, and that will be spoon fed to you through the LinkedIn algorithm. But then also if you have um, a CRM, these prospects are being, you know, they're being tagged, right? So Austin here would get tagged as a financial advisor. And then you'd be notified if Austin's engaging with any of your social content. You'd be notified if Austin is engaging with your website. You should have all of that tracked and then sales tasks ideally set based on lead scoring so that you'll know um, when to touch base. You know, touch base with your referral prospects monthly, quarterly, depending on the value. Um, you might be having dinner once a week, right? So that's kind of the, the general lunch and learn for today. Again, focus on adding value, building trust. That's the end goal, right? Other than staying on top of your, your outreach, making sure that you're staying top of mind, making sure the tracking is in place. Just focus on adding value, building trust. Don't come off as salesy. Um, you know, keep your workflows specific, hyper-specific in terms of content, in terms of industry lingo. Let them know that you know what you're talking about. Let them know that they're not your first financial advisor that you've worked with. Let them know that you've added value to other financial advisors. Um, and then again, the personal sales task based on lead scoring, get yourself set up on a CRM, get lead scoring in place. If you don't have that, you're missing out. Um, you know, just a year ago, I'd say the majority of the industry did not have that, but you, you're, you're missing out if your competitors have that and you do not, especially in an industry like business acquisition and sale where, you know, you've got to stay in front of these prospects over time. So lead scoring, CRM, get that in place. Um, that is it for today, guys. I hope, um, oh, okay, one question here. What are your thoughts about offering referral fees? Great segue, because that's what we're talking about next week. So we're gonna go through um, all of the referral fees, all of the compensation plans, what we've seen work and how to, to introduce those and um, keep those top of mind with your referral prospects. That'll be next week, we'll, we'll jump into that. So I'm not gonna answer that specifically here. So there we go, guys, hope, uh, hope that was valuable. See you next week. And please do leave the, um, leave the comments. Um, let us know how, how we're looking. We're, again, we're digging into this. So it's gonna get, um, it's gonna continue to change, get more detailed, more actionable steps with this new environment that we have where we're gonna be able to collaborate and give you, give you the free giveaways. I think it's, it's, it's gonna be a good month, it's gonna be a good quarter for, for all things BizNexus, but specifically for 
um, these lunch and learns, we are, we're going to turn this into a, a really valuable experience, not just a, a webinar Zoom presentation. So thanks, guys. Thanks for sticking with us. And we'll see you next week.